All right, welcome. So today we're going to take a look at how Godot is set up, how to kind of work your way around Godot, and how to set up a project uh, for use. Now, when you start up Godot, you're going to see something probably pretty different from this because I have all of these projects I've been working on that are in here. Uh, but let's kind of go through how you create a new project. So from here, you can still access those templates or the Godot asset library that I was uh, mentioning in the previous video. If you go to the templates page, and then from here, you'll see a lot of those will load in. Uh, these will end up being version specific. So if you want to try to, like for example, take a look at the role-playing game demo, the navigation demo, the 2D physics platformer demo, this is a place that you can do that. So for example, you would choose the 2D physics platformer demo, you would download it, and then you can create it as its own project. We're going to start with a fresh project though. So in my projects template here, I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to call this um, YouTube test. How about now one thing that will come up so is you can see that the create and edit button right now isn't there. You want to make sure that you're navigating your path to whatever folder you want to keep your projects in. For me, I'm keeping it in my documents folder. And then when you're creating your project name, you want to create a folder to go with it. And then this will turn into a little green check mark. Another thing you want to pay attention to, and this can be changed after you've already opened Godot, is if you're using OpenGL 3.0 or OpenGL 2.0. Uh, if you have an older piece of hardware, you might need to be using 2.0 as you're, you're working through stuff. The uh, laptop lab that I have at my school that where I teach has some pretty old hardware on it, and so that requires us to use 2.0 sometimes, depending on exactly what we're doing. For my case, I'm going to leave it in 3.0, and then we're going to create and edit. From here, we're going to get a glimpse at the Godot start screen and their sponsors, and then it brings us directly into a blank Godot project. So let's talk a little bit about exactly what's going on in here. So currently, um, we have a few different things that I want to draw your attention to. On the left, we have uh, kind of two sub windows, and one of those two windows has two tabs. So the scene window will tell you what's in a current scene that you're looking at. And so each of these that you can see here, there's none right now, are what are called nodes. So Godot works on a scene and node system. You want to think of a scene as a specific object or uh, function. Every scene in Godot should be able to run on their own. And these scenes are built up of nodes that have individual functions. For example, there's a node for a sprite, there's a node for adding animation, there's a node for just having a position. Uh, there's all kinds of nodes that you can add to your scene, and then those together make a scene. Now you might have a scene that is a level, or you might have another scene inside that scene that is just the player, and another scene for just one enemy type, etc. You want to make sure though that you're breaking it down so that each individual scene is capable of running on their own. Now let's talk about how to, or what this great big middle section here is. This is the editor view. The editor view is going to look different in 3D or in 2D. Currently, by default, whenever you open up Godot, it opens the editor into the 3D view. Now you can move around here uh, if you use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. If you hold down the right mouse button, you will rotate from wherever the scene is looking. If you hold down the middle mouse button, or for my case, the scroll wheel, you'll rotate around the center of the world. And then if you hold the shift key and, sorry, shift key and middle mouse button, you can pan around the world. Also, if you're holding down the right uh, mouse button, you can use WASD to move around and then Q and E to move up and down. And while you're doing this, you can also hold down shift to move more quickly. Now on the right hand side, we can see that we have another kind of tabs. One is for the inspector. And when you create a node, any properties that the node has that you might want to edit will show up in the inspector. The node tab here will bring you to any signals or groups that that node is a part of. Let's take a look at a 2D scene here. Now, if you click uh, create root node, I'm going to create a 2D scene. You'll see that automatically this changes to the 2D view. You'll also see that while previously up here 3D was selected, it automatically changes to 2D. 
Again, I can use my middle, my scroll wheel to zoom in and out, and my middle mouse button to pan around in the scene. One thing that you will notice is you have this kind of blue, bluish purpley line. And that's showing about where the display would be uh, if you were to play the scene as it is. And over here in the inspector, you can see that there are properties that have been added to this node that we can manipulate. This particular node is a node 2D, so it has a transform, which is position, rotation, and scale. It has a Z index, which is where it's going to be relative to everything else in the scene, whether it's going to be drawn on top of or behind. You can see it's got visibility, which includes uh, color, whether or not it's visible, a, a light mask, which is a bit more beyond what we're doing, and a material, which again is a bit more beyond what we're doing here. Underneath node, you can also add some editor descriptions, whether or not it pauses, and then you can add an extra script to add more functionality to extend what's already there. Now, one of the things I really like about Godot is in the inspector, if you don't know what something is, say for example, under Z index, you don't know what Z index means. If you mouse over the property, you will get a little pop-up here. So this is the name of the property is Z underscore index, meaning if you wanted to change it in code, you would need to reference it as Z underscore index. And then it tells you what it is, it controls the order in which the nodes render. A node with a higher Z index will display in front of others. So even though this is 2D, you can fake a 3D effect by having some things appear on top of other things. And one way to do that is to manipulate the Z index. There are other ways though as well. Now, uh, having done that, let's talk a little bit about setting up a project here. Now, I'm gonna be setting up a project that's gonna work for pixel art with a 400 uh, pixel width and a 255 pixel height. One thing you'll notice that is a little weird is you can see we've got these rulers up here and on the side. Now when you're looking at something that uses display um, XY uh, coordinates, I guess is the way to say that, uh, zero, zero is right here in what we would consider to be the top left of the screen. The X coordinate, which you can see here, increases as we go to the right, completely as you'd expect. However, the Y coordinate increases as you go down. So this is 600 Y pixels. This is negative 100 Y pixels. So it's a little strange if you've never worked with display coordinates before. Now I'm going to set up my project by going to the project settings. So project, project settings. And this brings up what I can, some people think is kind of intimidating. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on on here, but we're only gonna use a few things right now. The first thing I want to do is I want to set up the size of my project window. So to do that, over here on the left hand side with the general tab, I'm going to scroll down and find uh, where I have display and then window. I'm going to set my width to be 400 pixels wide by 225 pixels tall. I'm going to leave it resizable. I'm going to not make it borderless. I'm not going to make it full screen or always on top because I want to be able to move back and forth. Now my test width, so if I just leave it at 400 by 225, that's going to be a relatively small on a modern display. In fact, let's close this. You can see how much smaller the little periwinkle lines are now. Uh, up here in the right hand corner, you can see we have play project, which is going to play whatever scene is decided as the default. We have pause and stop for when we're playing the project. And this is play scene, and this is play a specific scene. So I'm just gonna play this scene here by pressing that play scene button. And I'm gonna save it just as node 2D. You can see on a modern display how teeny tiny 400 pixels by 225 is. Now, one way that you can fix that to make it be something that you can actually work with is by scaling up your display using your test width and test height. So I'm gonna make my test width here just double. I'll make it simple. 800 and I'll make my test height 450. A few other things I wanna work on here is I want to make sure my orientation is set to landscape since this is 16 by nine. I wanna set my mode to 2D which means that it's going to scale like a 2D game should. For aspect, I'm gonna set this to keep. Now when I now play my scene again, you'll see I have a significantly larger window to look at. 
you can scale this up as you see fit. You want to make sure that you're keeping your width and your height in the same proportion as your base resolution is. All right, now a few other things I want to change in project and project settings. First is the physics. Under physics, I want to highlight 2D. Oh, sorry, not physics, it's physics layers. So under layer names, I want to find the 2D physics. And I'm going to create a few physics layers. It's important to do this in your project because by setting up your layers, you're defining what uh, objects can and cannot interact with what other objects. By doing that, you're cutting down on unnecessary calls. For example, if your enemy walks over a coin, you don't want the coin to have to check to see if the enemy should collect it. You just want the enemy to ignore the coin and vice versa. So I'm going to create a few layers here. I'm going to create one for the player. I'm going to create one for the NPCs, one for the enemies, if I can spell that correctly, one for the environment, and one for items. And I might want to add to this as I come back. So there I go. I've got my physics settings. I also want to create an input map. So before I even start my project, I want to have in my mind what inputs I want to have. So to do that, I'm going to go to my input map here. Now there's already some predefined inputs and these are all based on uh, UI. I'm going to create some custom ones. The first one I'm going to create is left, then I'm going to do right, up, and down. These are going to be for movement. Now whenever I create a new um, input action, I can now add what that input action is. So if I click on add event, I can add either a key a button on a joypad, an axis of a joystick, or a mouse button. For left, I'm going to have this be two separate keys. So one key is going to be the left arrow key, but I want it to also be the A key, so that anybody who uses WASD for controls should be familiar with it. Now if I want to go back and change these, I can, just by clicking on this edit, or if I want to remove one, I can by clicking on the remove button. I can also add more to it. For example, if I want this to be on a joy key as well, or a joypad as well, I can choose joy axis. And for left, I want it to be left stick left. So I'm going to add that. I'm going to do something similar for right up and down, and I'm going to fast forward through that part. Okay, so here we are. I've got my three different commands for left, right, up, and down. Now there's a few other that I'd like to add. Uh, I'm going to add an interact button. So I'm going to add interact. And I want my interact button to be the space bar. So I'm going to make a space bar. I'd also like it to be, however, uh, on a joypad, I want it to be DualShock cross Xbox A. So I want it to be the what would be the A button on an Xbox. And I'll add that. I'm also going to add a cancel button where you want to like maybe cancel out of a menu. And for a key here, I'm going to have this be um let's have it be escape. And on the um joy button, we'll have this be B. Okay, cool. So now I've got my input map. Now I can call these inputs from script by making sure that I remember exactly what I named them. For example, I named left lowercase l left. If I changed this and made this uppercase l left, in order for me to use it in script, I'd have to make sure that I spell it exactly correctly, including cases. So that's one thing you want to make sure that you're keeping your, your mind on. But so long as I have this input map set up, 
Now, whenever I call left, it's going to be looking for the left arrow key, the A key, or the left axis on the left joystick. All right, so there we go. I've got my project all set up here. Now, my Node 2D, I don't actually need to have this, so I'm gonna end up deleting it. Um, I'm just gonna create a new scene here. Let's get rid of that one. I don't wanna save, and I'm even gonna delete it from here because this isn't very good project structure. So I'm just gonna delete. All right, cool. So there we go. Uh, I kind of walked you through exactly how to use Godot, uh, how to set it up, kind of a little bit about how it's structured, how to create the correct resolution for your project, and how to create an input map. So hopefully this is helping you guys get started into game dev with Godot Engine. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the description down below. If you learned anything, feel free to give me a like. And yeah, I hope everybody has a great day.